Welcome back, beautiful people. Uh, let's continue where we last left off. We finished modeling our coffee can inside of Max, and now it's time to unwrap our model and bring the UVs to Photoshop, where we're going to be creating the texture maps for this model. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay up to date on more design tutorials every week. Let's get started. Essentially, after I'm done modeling my object, I break apart my 3D model and flatten the polygons to a 2D surface. This 2D surface is the flattened representation of my model, which I then export as an image file for me to apply my textures on. In this case, I'm going to be using Photoshop to design and add my textures, which will then be reapplied on my 3D model. Anything that I place on my UV map will then be applied to my model directly. UV mapping. I'm going to start cleaning out this model and I split apart the elements, so I separated and isolated my can. Now I'm going to start using a planar mapping for this top portion first. So I apply my unwrap UVW and I'm selecting the top portions of my coffee can. The idea here is that I want to use a uh, planar mapping to get the top portion the bottom portion, and then finally the overall cylinder shape. So what I'm selecting right now, these red polygons will be the flattened dimensions for my Z map. Okay, so I'm selecting these guys and then I'm going to be applying a planar mapping to the very top. So I want to make sure I'm selecting all necessary polygons and I'm not missing anything else. This is where you got to take your time. Um, if you miss any of these uh, steps, it will be saved. You can always reapply it, but it's better to do it in one shot. So I'm double checking, making sure I can see everything. I'm going to click on my planar map and I'm going to use the Z axis. I fit it to my screen, uncheck normalize, and here it is. Once you zoom out, you can see that is the 2D representation of that model. I'm going to move it over to the side and then I'm going to continue with the bottom. So again, I finished the top. I'm selecting the bottom portion of, the, of my model, expanding my polygon, and using the same process. So planar mapping, z-axis, fit, there we go. Now it's time to do the cylindrical mapping. So basically everything else that's left over. You'll notice there that there are four different, um, well actually five different representations for mapping, including your pelt mapping. What I'm using now is the cylindrical mapping on the y-axis, and I'm going to be breaking it down. And you see how it opens it up almost similar to a pelt mapping. I select all of these remaining assets and I have to fit everything within this checkered box right here. This is what I'm going to be exporting out as my bitmap file once I'm done. So I have to make sure all of my assets fit directly. The thing to consider when using your UV mapping process is the larger your elements are, the more details you can actually apply to it. So things that are not necessarily important, you can actually shrink it. Moving on, let's go and work on the sippy cup model. I've UV mapped the top portion, and now I'm going to get the front and the back. So planar mapping set to Y. Finish out that guy and do the remaining left and right. So that's planar mapping set to X. So three different axes to work with on this guy. There's my X portion of the model. Next comes the tab. I'm going to get Z for the top. And for this portion, I'm going to be working on the front and the back. So that's planar mapping set to Y axis. Here's the sides now. There we go. Now, once I have everything placed, I'm going to reattach everything. So it's one model again. And just like with the others, I have to make sure they all fit within my checkerboard. That's what I'm going to be using to export out my model. So I want to make sure everything uh, fits in correctly and it's nice. Placements, there's enough space for color and any details that I might want to add. Once I'm done, I'm going to render it out. I'm going to choose 2048 by 2048 pixels and I'm going to call it coffee can underscore W. The W stands for wireframe and I'm going to be choosing PNG for transparency. Inside of Photoshop, I'm going to open it up. 
that same PNG file. I'm going to rename my file to wire, create a new layer, control shift N for shortcut, alt and backspace to color it dark gray, call it BG for background. And I'm going to be bringing in my original illustrator design for the background along with the logo. I'm going to import both of them in and group them to make sure that they're nice and organized. Name your layers, duplicate it so you have your original master file. That's one thing that you should always uh, do in your projects. Always save your originals just in case you mess up. So for these guys, I'm going to scale it proportionately. So control T and holding shift to scale. I want to make sure I want to leave a little bit of the silver material right there just to give it a little bit of contrast once I'm doing my renders. And for this portion, I decided to duplicate and to flip horizontally my background design, the cover. And what I want to do is I want to have these leaves facing one another. So I'm going to be using a layer mask here, black and painting in to dissolve the uh, top layer and using white to show what's underneath. So using a layer mask is a good tool for this setup. Let's jump into Illustrator now. And what I'm gonna be creating are my different coffee uh, flavors. So I'm coming up with the different names, Black Drip and Vanille Francais, and I'm gonna be using glyphs to get my Lacidi and I'm I want to outline these names after, so I'm just making duplicates of them. And I'm going to create my border box with my custom brush. And I'm going to be outlining these guys and aligning them so they're absolutely centered within one another. After I'm done, I'm going to export these guys out. High resolution images, so at least 150 dpi. Jumping back into Photoshop, we're going to be working on the actual background now. So with black drip, every time you're creating a new kind of design, you want to make sure the aesthetics match the overall copy, right? So for this one, black drip, I'm thinking it's like a dark roast. It's, you know, used for energy. So it's high contrast, very dark images. So I'm using um, a hue and saturation a brightness and contrast to make things pop, and then finally a levels to accentuate the uh, designs here. Next one's hazelnut. This one I'm treating it kind of differently. I'm using a color balance with an inverse color image. So I wanted to differentiate it a, a little bit more. I wanted to make it pop, so a little bit more lively, right? So a little bit lighter. So I'm going with pink and green for my hues and I'm just gonna make it a little bit warmer with a color balance and finally a photo filter. Next up is Mocha Mint. So I'm starting with the original and I'm gonna use a hue and saturation, inverse my colors a little bit and I'm gonna be using obviously a little bit of brown and some green to make it pop. I'm desaturating uh, my reds a little bit and I'm going more towards the cyan. For Vanille Francais, I'm gonna go with uh, blue and purple. So starting with the original Mocha Mint, I've inversed my colors and I'm going to use the color balance along with a photo filter that's set to underwater. Once I have all of these guys set up, I'm going to export them all out as JPEG and then we're going to jump into 3ds Max again. Inside of Max, I'm going to build out my plane. This plane is going to be representing my photography backdrop, right? So I'm going to manipulate it and create an actual photography backdrop background. And for these guys, I'm going to use a soft curve on those edges. And the reason for that is I want soft shadows. If I want it to be harsh and crisp, I would have kept it at a 90 degree. So adding my segments. What I'm creating now is my material for my can. So I'm gonna use a V-Ray material shader. Shortcut key letter M, choosing V-Ray material, going to my diffuse slot bitmap, and I'm gonna look for my black drip coffee texture, my JPEG, my diffuse texture. So there it is, I've selected it, and I'm gonna apply it. 
What I'm gonna be building right now is the reflection settings. So I'm gonna use a fall off with a uh, perpendicular type to give me some extra shine. Lighting. I'm constructing my basic three point lighting right now. So I'm starting first with a simple V-Ray plane. Soft lighting, these are just tests, so I don't wanna go too crazy on this one. I'm setting it to invisible. And camera what I'm constructing camera. right now is my V-Ray physical camera. So this physical camera works like a real life camera. You have your ISO controls, your F-stop, your shutter speed, all of these things, your vignettes. So I'm choosing the perfect setup for my camera. And I wanna use um, the perf perfect. perfect blend, so I'm making it pretty subtle for now low settings and I can always modify after the fact. So choosing my f-stops and my ISO, my shutter speed, and I'm building my beauty shot close-ups and preparing my camera for their final shots. IOR baby. Let's talk about some IOR here. So uh, I pulled up this chart here and this displays the Fresnel IOR and the reflection IOR, right? So what is the index of refraction. Um, it's basically a ratio that compares the speed of light in a vacuum compared to the speed of light in a material. Each material has their own index of refraction or IOR. So um, example, gases have low IOR, solids have high IOR, liquids are somewhere in the middle. Um, water is 1.33, a diamond is 2.4, and milk is 1.35. So these values help create a more realistic material and thus a more realistic render. It makes everything look that much cooler too. So once I've chosen my chart values, I'm gonna use 0.85 for my reflection glossiness, and then I'm gonna enable my Fresnel reflections, and I'm gonna use an IOR of 2.7. I'll make sure to uh, put a link for this chart in the uh, description of my video. Next stop, we're gonna be working with V-Ray HDRI, the high dynamic range image. I'm gonna be covering HDRIs in a future video, but for right now, I'm just setting it up. I've downloaded it and I'm gonna apply it. Test render, baby. Let's do some test renders, baby. Here it is. Rendering it out. Everything looks good. All my materials are set up. Reflection, Fresnel, IOR, and everything looks great. There you have it. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat the same steps just with different textures for the rest of my coffee cans. I hope you enjoyed this UV mapping and texture creation tutorial. And if you learned something today and wanna see more, please hit that sub button and notification bell to feed my ego, okay? Thank you very much for watching and may the universe smile upon you.